Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And today I'm here with a video that hopefully will answer quite a few of the same recurring comment that I keep having in my comments. Um, sorry, comment, I mean question. Now the question is, Kerry, what are those boxes you use for storing your ephemera? Okay, they're talking about these boxes, these ones. I store my ephemera in them, I have a small bookshelf next to me, and these just stack on top of each other. As you can see, I've done some labels for them because I must have about 30 or 40 of them over there. I find them really useful. Um, they're easy to access. I can look through them. They're not a deep, deep box that causes me problems, but we'll talk more about those in a little while, but first of all, I want to address any other, other ephemera because I don't only use these, okay? I do use other things and I use other things for certain reasons. So, first things first, my butterflies. I have one of these boxes. You've probably seen them in your stationery store. All I did was I made some partitions, glued the partitions in, and this is my butterfly storage. So basically there's large, these are actually stickers and I've kept them separate because although they're stickers, I like to trim them down before I stick them on because that's too much of whiteness on those for me. I like to trim them down. Um, I've got washy um, butterflies. I sort of just throw them in here if I've got off, off cuts um, and these are small and small. So basically, this is my main butterfly storage. Um, I identify it because I've got one of my little labels on front with a butterfly, but this is just one of those. For me, it's an A4 box. Um, I'm sure in America it's a letter sized box, but A4 for me is just our regular paper size. So that's, that's what I store my butterflies in. When it comes to Tim Holtz um, paper dolls, um, I've tried numerous different ways of storing these and I've seen umpteen other people store them as well. It's like, I mean, with every bit of ephemera, all of us find our own way of storing stuff that works for us. It's like, I know Gail Augustinelli has uh, little sandwich bags for everything. It I, That wouldn't work for me, but it works perfectly for her. Um, I know other people have drawer sets. Um, some people have designated baskets for everything. Um, so anyway, the, we all have our own way. So I tried several ways to store the Tim Holtz paper dolls because I like to root through them all. Um, I like discovering ones that maybe I've forgotten about. So I don't keep all the girls with the girls and the groups with the groups and the men with the men, the sitting with the sitting, the big with the big, the small with the small. I literally dump everything into the same box. And then as I'm going through them, occasionally I'll come across one and go, oh, I forgot about that one. And I'll use that. This is what works for me. Now, before I started using these little boxes and those plastic trays and things, I did have um, ephemera folios. Now, I made these. Um, they kind of worked for quite a while, but uh, what I found was, as I was handling them, things would keep slipping out, or it would go down into the bottom and it would be the devil's own job to try and get them out, even with a pair of tweezers. I keep these because sometimes, if I'm working on a project that has got, say, pieces of paper or that I want to slot in there, this is quite good if I've got ephemera that, say, the side. You can see this is another reason I don't like. If I've got pieces of ephemera, like, um, what are they called? Oh, photo cards or something like that. I could slot them in here, but th this is on the shelf. It could get used if it's appropriate to use it. Now... I do have a bigger one. I made this one. It's possibly the very first thing I ever made um, for storing ephemera. I made this inspired by a video that Gail Augustinelli shared. I can't remember how many years ago. I couldn't even find the original video if I chose. But I made this completely from scratch. It wasn't a recycled book. I made the spine and the covers. Again, I used it for some stuff like like this that sort of doesn't fit in a box and doesn't really have a home or just stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like these things, my painted papers and stuff. I put them in here, but the problem is 
they constantly fall out the top. So if I'm flipping through a page, sometimes these will fall out and I'm forever hunting where they were before. So I struggle with these and as you can see, I've now moved away from this and I now have gone back to, well not, I've now discovered the boxes work best for me. So, right, so what are these boxes? Now I have referred to these boxes in the past and I call them peel-off boxes, which sometimes causes confusion because people don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, back in the day, and we're talking quite a few years ago, there were these things. Now, they still exist out there, um, but before foiling machines arrived, before die-cutting machines were around, um, we had these. These are called peel-offs, and what they are is basically, they're usually foiled. You can get them in many different metallic finishes plus white um, and black and basically they're manufactured and a machine kiss cuts them which means the the cutting die hits the paper enough so it doesn't cut through the backing it only cuts through the foreground so if I was to take this one say so I can peel this off I always found these really frustrating to use I must admit so I'm trying to lift this off here. So there you go, on the back of my hand, you can now see I would have an outline. Now these were used a lot for card making. Sometimes they were the only way you could put a bit of glitz and glamour onto something. Try to find something I can hold it up against, there you go. So you would actually lay that down, press it down and it would stick to your surface. Um, they were very, very popular. I've seen some some versions of them coming back again with new contemporary designs. But anyway, so this is peel off. That's P-E-E-L, second word, O-F-F. -F. It's a peel off. So, right. so anyway, that's what peel offs are. Now, these boxes I originally know as peel off boxes because as far as I knew, that's what these boxes were made for storing peel-offs okay and i'm laboring the word peel-off but that's quite a good search word for engines um what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and go onto the internet and go onto ebay and amazon and see whether i can find out the specific descriptions that may find you these okay um the links I put in, they're not affiliated links. I'm not earning anything from them. I'm not even sure whether the link I share will be visible or be able to be used outside of the UK because I've, I use eBay and Amazon UK. So I'm not sure whether the link works elsewhere. What I will do, though, is in the description box, if I find them, which I will find them, I just need to find them, um, I'll put the description that was used by either eBay or Amazon. Now, I do know here in this country, I can buy these in Hobbycraft, which is my version of Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby being the American, Hobbycraft being the British version. Um, I'm sure I've seen them in Michael's. Um, probably the larger craft show sell them. Um, I've just been to an arts and crafts show at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham, which is where I bought another stock of them. So if you're going to a, a large craft and art show, look around. They're probably where you'll find plastic storage boxes. OK, right. Now, let's give you some dimensions because it could be you're looking for a specific thing. Now, these are quite difficult to measure because they sort of have two measurements. They have the outside measurement, which is dictated by the lid because the lid is bigger than the base. And then the important measurement for me is the inside. So I'm going to tell you what they are. I've written them down so I can actually remember them so I don't break my neck trying to remeasure them. So the longest length, and I'm measuring these by the outside now, is nine and seven eighths long or 25 centimeters. The width is four and a half inches wide or 114 millimeters. And the depth is one and a quarter inches or 33 millimeters. Okay, now, when you open the box up, because obviously I'm interested more in the internal sizes, the internal length here on the inside of the box is nine and five eighths 
or 244 millimeters. This width here is four and a quarter inches or 109 millimeters wide and the depth is one and one eighth or 29 millimeters deep. Okay, hopefully that worked. I will endeavor to type this up um, in the description box as well just so you all know what they are because if you haven't been able to capture what I'm saying or maybe with my accent I've I've skewed it a little bit then at least you'll have it written down. Now um, I use these as is let's see if I got one right. I use them for things like I mean here's flowers and I put there's this little book of stickers that I've got I just put them in there so everything flowers is in here I don't need a divider they don't come with a divider but that's that's what I would use for my bigger ephemera. Although I do use them with a divider in, like this is just stamped words. This again is stamped words and some of the small stamp um, labels I've made. This is where my bird storage is. Although if there's any birds bigger than this, the bigger birds I think are kept in this one. Um, but I don't tend to use birds much bigger than this because in, in realistic terms, when I'm making ephemera or stuff for journaling, this half this size, which is what this is, is more than large enough to store them. Again, here's the fish storage. Again, another one of those little book boxes, the fish. So the question always comes, where do you get the, the dividers from or the partitions? Well, I make them myself. So, right, I get... A reasonable bit of paper. This isn't copier paper. It's a little bit thicker. You could use scrap card. You could use whatever you wish to use. I mean, scrapbook paper may work if it's a little heavier than copier paper. So now, this is going to be determined by your paper dimensions in the country you're in. OK, so here in the UK, this is a UK A4, which means that it's eight and a quarter wide by 11 and three quarters in length. OK, so I'm going to cut a strip that's 11 and three quarters to make the divider for the inside of my box. Now, I know the inside width of here is four and a quarter wide. Now, I want to try and make this as close to the tightness of this as I can. So I'm going to bring in my what do you call this a guillotine and I said it's four and a quarter so let's come into four and a quarter and I might just come ever so fractionally on the inside of that I can always trim a little more if it's too wide but so see that that fits in there perfectly well if if it's a bit tight of a fit just take another slither off so right that can go to one side so how do I make my inserts so I've got my box, I've got my strip. Remember, this is what? 11 and three quarters by just under four and a quarter, like one tiny notch under. I tend to fold it over. I don't score it. I'm not gonna go into that much to score it. I just come here, I give it a press with my bone folder, bone folder, and then I've got this, this tent shape. So I put it into my box as so, and I push it down till it hits the end and then I keep pushing down and I fold it in one direction and I fold it in the other direction. I then take it back out and I give it a bit of a squish my bone folder. Now I aim for just the middle here. I don't have to have it equidistant. The process usually makes it in the centre. You could, however, if you chose, you could do it so that the fold was here. I mean, I've never done it that way, but I mean, you could easily do it so that the fold was here and you had a larger compartment and a smaller. Now, because of the length of my paper, as you can see, it comes right to the top edge of the box. If you've got American size paper, you may have to trim a little bit off the end to make it 11 and three quarters if you've got the box the same dimension. And there you go. That's how I make my dividers for my boxes. Um, 
I like to get the width as close as I can to the edges so that things don't go from one compartment to the other. But to be honest, a piece of paper could slide through there. If I have a label go from there to there, it doesn't overly bother me. So hopefully that's answered the question. Um, so in future, if you ask me what are those boxes, I can now just cut and paste that this video into the answer and you'll all know about it. I just want to make sure that I was trying to help people who keep asking me things. I'd always try to get back to you. Sometimes I can't get back as, as quickly as I'd like, but there you go. So that's my boxes for ephemera. That's how I make the dividers for them. I do have other ways of storing stuff, but I like these. They, they're lightweight, they stack on my um, shelf. If I'm going through something, let's, let's choose one that I have to go through. Okay, it's so easy to actually just open the lid and go, right, I don't want that one, don't want that one. And I tend to put them upside down in the lid. And then once I've been through, as you can see, because they're shallow, I can have a good route round. And then what I normally do is I normally just flip the lid over, which puts them back up the right way, put the lid on and they go back in. They're lightweight. If I'm going to a craft retreat or something and I know I'm working on ephemera, I'll pull out a few of these to go with me or I'll actually just take an empty one and I will make up a couple of boxes of ephemera to take with me so I don't have all those baskets and bowls and everything to go with me. So hopefully, guys, that's answered the question. That's as crystal clear as I can be about it. OK, any questions? Refer to the information or the description box, as I said. I'll put the measurements in there. I will try and find the descriptions that I found them in on Amazon and eBay. I will also put a link to them on Amazon and eBay if I find them. But before you go down that road, uh, always look in your craft storage areas um, in whichever crafting store you're in. You will find them or something very, very similar. OK, I think that's enough of me talking. Um, this is meant to be a short video, and it is a short video. So, I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, goodbye now.